I thought I knew all about sleep. I mean, I've spent a third of my life in bed, alone. So you'd think I'd know all about it. But then I did some Googling and I realized that even scientists aren't really sure what the point of it is. I mean, couldn't we have evolved better so that we don't need to spend eight hours every night unable to protect ourselves from predators? What actually is the point of sleep? And what can happen to you when you don't get enough of it? Sleep is split into different stages. Light sleep, deep sleep, and rapid eye movement or REM sleep. Cells in our brain recover during non-REM sleep, and we have most of our dreams in REM sleep. Recent studies suggest sleep releases toxins which build up in the brain, a bit like taking a shower. Now, here's the thing. Men who sleep for five hours a night have way smaller testicles than men who sleep for, say, eight hours a night. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Apparently, not getting enough sleep reduces testosterone levels, and sleeping in a heated room or wearing pajamas has the same effect. It works the other way around, too. If you have sex before you go to bed, your body releases a chemical called oxytocin, aka the love hormone, which can help you get to sleep. So, if you're having trouble sleeping, maybe you should take your pants off first. Around 20% of people have a sleep disorder. I was wired up in a clinic where these patients are analysed overnight. Feels a bit like an alien probe or something. <laughs> Hope you can't read my mind with all this. Leg movements can indicate sleepwalking, restless leg syndrome, and REM sleep behaviour disorder. This is where people act out their dreams because their body isn't paralysed like it should be. Patients with narcolepsy fall asleep suddenly during the day. This can include sudden loss of muscle function and dreamlike hallucinations while awake. Okay, wish you good night and sweet dreams. The record for the longest time without sleep is held by Randy Gardner from California. Randy stayed awake for a whopping 11 days and 25 minutes when he was just 17. He became paranoid, moody, and had hallucinations. Amazingly, he recovered after just two days and didn't have any long-term health problems. Now, I'm not gonna try and break Randy's record, but to get an idea of how sleep deprivation affects me personally, I've decided to pull an all-nighter. I'm going to do three tests at the start and the end of the day to see how well I'm functioning. A physical test where I time myself running around the block. A memory test where I have 30 seconds to look through a sheet of images, then have a minute to write down as many as I can remember. Then finally, an online reaction test where I have to click as soon as the screen changes colour. And just to make things harder for myself, I'm not allowed any caffeine or other stimulants which I'd normally have on a night out. So I've just been awake for 24 hours, I'm feeling pretty knackered, and it's time to do the tests again and see what the results are. In the physical test, my first time was 4 minutes and 14 seconds, whereas my second time was 4 minutes and 24 seconds. I remembered 17 out of the 25 pictures in the first memory test, but after 24 hours I only got 12. My reaction time dropped from 371 milliseconds to 389 milliseconds. Now that I've tested it, I know just how much sleep affects me. Sleep is super important, but worrying about it just makes it harder to doze off. You can decide for yourself whether you're getting enough rest, but I for one am ready for bed. <laughs>